everybody. Uh, as you guys know, we are uh, Sato and me. We are working with Professor Golaski here in Agrila, which you to learn many, many things. And uh, I'd like to justify first this, this background. Uh, for me as a student, I've been perceiving uh, science as a diving expedition because as when you are diving, you can see uh, all the things that are there. Even though everything is there, you only can see one piece of information at each, at each time. You can only assess or address one particular uh, research question at each time. And as you go further, you keep uh, in, in the understanding new things and learning and understanding everything. But it's one step at a time. And uh, we'll, we'll try to talk a little bit about this, uh, one of these uh, little things of science. And it's a, it's a method for assessing regional blood flow. Uh, we are learning here uh, in regional blood flow in different vascular, vascular beds. And uh, that's, that's one of the things that we, we are addressing here. So everything starts with a hypothesis. And uh, if we want to pick a, a very broad research question, this would be it. Does air pollution increase vascular resistance? Does it increase blood pressure? Or mainly the topic of this lecture, does it decrease blood flow? And, and that's what we, what we are trying to understand. And it has been shown by this group that it does, at least for in the heart, uh, air pollution exposure, it, it decreases uh, regional blood flow in the heart. We'll see a little bit about this paper in, in some minutes. And also there are some, bit, some data to be published about uh, renal and splenic uh, blood flows. And, uh, and it, it's showing a, a decrease in this, in this vascular beds also. So this, this comes to be a very important uh, method, a very powerful method for asset, assessing this, this information because from this point on you can uh, have many other research questions so uh, how would be uh, the angiotensin aldosterone system in these, in these uh, animals uh, what would be the, the, the uh, hematologic repercussions of, of the pollution as we now are seeing uh, uh, diminished uh, blood flow to these to this vascular beds so it is very interesting uh, we are also uh, interested in on neurovascular repercussions of, of pollution. Uh, how does it change brain perfusion if it does? And what would be the, the cognitive repercussions of, of this change of, of, of perfusion there? And, uh, and many other things we, we can assess. With this technique we can assess blood flow perfusion, uh, blood flow uh, in different places uh, as you will see. So clearly the goal here is is to understand and, and, and to see a little bit about this, this technique of assessing and understand uh, perfusion in different vascular beds in a rat model. And for that we use this technique, we use these fluorescent microspheres. Uh, the concept uh, has been raised uh, many years ago with radioactive microspheres, uh, but the fluorescent ones, they, they have proven to be uh, much cheaper, they are easier to deal with, the training is different, and you don't have to deal with, with uh, radioactive waste and, and they, they don't decay as, as uh, radioactive substances uh, they do. So, and they come with it in different dyes, or meaning colors. Uh, as a fluorescence concept, concept you, you, you provide an excitation wave, wavelength and then the, the substance is absorbs and releases uh, it, it, the energy with a particular wavelength of, of emission. So uh, each dye it has uh, the, the, the particular pair of uh, wavelength uh, excitation and wavelength emission. And the, the concept is to inject these microspheres into, into the le left chambers of, of the heart because we, we want these microspheres to get uh, evenly distributed and mixture to, with the blood. Uh, and then we collect the tissue, uh, it, it, they get it entrapped into the capillaries and it is important that they, they can be uh, large enough to get entrapped before in the arterial and then they need to get entrapped there, precisely in the capillar, capillaries, in the first pass so we can have ratios, we can have information about blood, blood flow and, and it happens because of a crucial uh, uh, assumption that the uh, the number of microspheres entrapped in the tissue are, is in direct uh, relation to the perfusion uh, there. 
So this this uh, allows us to, to to take some conclusions about about the number, and uh, that's why uh, we use this uh, as uh, assessment of regional blood flow. And if we want to have absolute data, absolute values about blood flow in a in the tissue you sampled, we can also do a, a blood sample collection while we are we are injection injecting. Then we will we, we'll know the dilution. And with that, we, we, we can know how many mLs per, per minute per gram of tissue is going there. And, and then we can take different uh, pieces of, of a given uh, organ and even map the perfusion in, in, in this organ. So it's an interesting uh, technique. Uh, an example of the, of the utility of, of this technique, uh, it's been, been shown by this group that in, uh, after uh, a caps exposure, before this, this is a, as you guys can, can see, this is a crossover design in which each animal receives uh, different uh, interventions in sequence. Th those in, these interventions here, they are separate by, by at least one week, and then you have two possibilities: you have future air or caps exposure. And they also had implanted some uh, uh, hydraulic uh, system for occluding their their left anterior descending artery. So. Uh, the, the, the design was five hours of, of exposure, immediately followed by five minutes of, of occlusion, then a, a, an interval, and then five minutes of, of occlusion. And in this second occlusion, and in the third minute, the, the microspheres would be injected, and that's the, precisely the, the time in which you, you are assessing uh, regional blood flow in, in the tissues we, you are interested in. So th these are some of, of the results uh, uh, we got. Uh, as, as you can see, these, these are sections of, of a particular animal, and uh, with the, the filtered air, uh, after the filtered air exposure, uh, the occlusion uh, caused uh, naturally uh, an ischemia area, ischemic area, and when after this, this same animal was exposure to caps, the ischemic area was, came to be much bigger, and and, and as we and also we can we can uh, see. The, the total myocardial blood flow, uh, and it, 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 we can we perceive a, a significant difference between filtered air exposure and caps exposure. So uh, this, this this is a one one uh, application of this technique. We can assess uh, blood flow uh, in different tissues, and these are this is a mapping of the tissue. You take different you take many different pieces of the pieces of the tissue and then you quantify by each gram or by each piece of, 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 the, of the organ. So, but for, for to do, to be able to apply this technique, we need to do surgery. We need to have a chronic percutaneous access to the bloodstream in these two points. And we do that by uh, implanting some vascular access ports. And that's majorly what, what we are doing right now. We are operating heads, we are reds, we are catheterizing their, their hearts their aortas, and, and with this catheterization, we, we are able to, to do the technique and, and assess blood flow. And again, uh, this, this is about rats. Before it was done on dogs, and, and now we are going to, to a much smaller scale. We are trying to understand these uh, flows in, in, in this kind of model. So, the, this is our workstation here. Uh, we have the ventilator, the, this blue thing here. Uh, our lamps, the, the heating pad, and the microscope. The microscope I would like to highlight because the, the, it's very important for us. As we are, we are operating on 300 gram animals, and we need to be very precise and very delicate in order to, to accomplish the, the surgery. So it's fundamental for us. And uh, here is our, our surgical table. I would like to, to highlight for you guys the vascular access port with which is this, this little thing here, I'll pass for you, and, and this is also the POA sheath introducer. This is useful for us for us, uh, inserting this into the left ventricle chamber. I'll, I'll pass and then you, you can explore it. And well, it starts with a sagittal incision in, in the back, and then we dissect the fascia, we anchor or fix the, the vascular access port down to, to the muscle layer, and you can see the, the markings we do in the catheter for us to, to get precisely in the point, in the depth we want into the, the left ventricle. And then we go, go to the thoracotomy. 
We'll do it in the skin, in the skin incision, we dissect the fissure, then we dissect the muscle layer, and then we see the thoracic wall. And we go for the sixth intercostal space, which was a space we, we after doing many dissections, we, we found to be the most adequate one for us in this procedure. And then the heart. We opened and we see, we visualize the heart. We place some white gauze in the left lung, then we open the pericardium and we place uh, some, some white gauze in the sinus oblique sinus. So we lift the, the, the apex a little bit and we are able to perform the purse string. Uh, the purse string suture consists of five uh, suture pads. We make, a, we make a, a square and in the middle of this square we insert the POA sheath introducer, which is only a sheath. sheath with a needle inside, and then we insert it in the middle of this square, done by, by the push string, and then we take the, the, the needle off, insert the catheter in, in, the, in the right depth we want, we peel away the sheet, then we, we tie the push string so we don't have blood uh, risk of blood loss anymore, then we make some loops all the cat, around the catheter, tie it, and then it's fixed permanently to the organ, and it's catheterized. And then we, we go for the aorta. First, we, we dislocate the lung a little bit, and then we dissect the, the, the artery, we dissect the inner coastal arteries, and then we, we cauterize these, these pairs of inner coastal arteries, and then we do the purse string. First we cross clamp before doing the purse string. As we are making holes, we cross clamp up and down, and then we are able to make the purse string again a square. And then in the middle of this square, we poke a hole in the needle, insert the catheter, uh, advance the catheter beyond the, the lower cross clamp, and then we tie the, the purse string so we don't have blood loss because the wall is against the catheter and then loop around, tie and it's fixed uh, to, to the artery and, and it's done. Then we, we check patency and, uh, and we are ready to go. So for the outcomes of this procedure, we have three animals with uh, the heart catheterized right now. The animals in which we try the, the order catheterization, the, the, after they recovered the anesthesia, they had paralysis. So right now we are wondering and, and, and asking many questions and trying to, to control many covariates. It might be due to the ischemia period. Now right now we have 15 minutes of ischemia period. We can we have the possibility of splitting this in two possible steps. We can do cross clamp, do the, the purse string, and then release flow, have the interval with uh, full uh, blood uh, blood flow, and then we cross clamp again, make the hole, insert the catheter, tie everything, and, and we are done. So we will go for, for this attempt. And another covariate would be the intercoastal arteries cauterization. We we are starting to wondering uh, starting to wonder if this is important in this animal. And uh, and, and then we could by uh, providing ischemia to the to the anterior funiculus of the spinal cord. So and right now we are able to do it with uh, only one pair of uh, of intercoastal space cauterized. We'll go for a non cauterization of intercoastal uh, arteries. It's very tight, but it will, we'll be able to do it. And these these animals, they are still very useful for us because, as we saw before, all, by only injecting, we, we are able to have rela relative data. We, you can compare the number of, of, of beats or microspheres in, in the tissue you are interested in with the number of, of microspheres in a reference tissue. So and it's done. It's done uh, very elegantly by 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 this this group, uh, and it's being published in Nature. They use a spinal bone to as a normalization for for other bones. So we are still able to to have some interesting information about this blood flow distribution. Even though we don't have uh, we we are not have able to have absolute values of blood flow per gram of tissue without the blood sample sampling. And that's the, the, the point. So clearly for us now, this is what most excites us right now. This is our challenge. And, and uh, this, uh, this is uh, our next step to, to, be, to be taken. And, and it's a, a brick wall, uh, as Randy Posh said in, in his last lecture. Uh, brick walls or, or challenges or difficulties, they are there not, for, not to prevent you to achieve something. They are there to show you how much you want something and how committed you are to achieve a, a given goal. And we're learning many other things like teamwork, how everybody in the team is important for any kind of, of result, uh, the, pleasure of, the pleasure of being, a, being in charge of something. Uh, you're responsible 
for something. Something is in your hands for you to solve and for you to, to get results. It's marvelous. The motivation we have every day by, by doing this and the hard work. And it's important for us to know that every day we are working and each thing we do every day is important for the final outcome. And this, this is a, a great opportunity to learn that. So it might be, it might be a question, keep trying, it might be a question of, of scientific uh, curiosity or, or, or perseverance uh, or it might be also a question of pre and post natal exposure mm -hmm. and the brain shrinking Professor Paulo Saldiva showed us uh, related to that so we'll keep trying and, and, and soon we'll have uh, good information with the aura catheterized also mm -hmm. and uh, I would like to thank you so much uh, you guys for, for your attention thank you the guys from the lab that we are working together and learning many things uh, from, from more experienced people and uh, I would like also to, to thank you guys uh, so much for, for the opportunity and, and uh, thank Professor, uh, Professor John Valesk, Professor Paul Saldiva for, for helping us to, to be here and learning a lot and, and let's keep diving and learning more things. <laughs>